Well, good morning. Good morning to PWP Prayer Movement. Thank you for joining us this morning. We ask that you pick up your devices, use the share button, put people's names in the comments so that they are getting the notification that the praying women are on stream, are, on, are streaming this morning on Facebook and YouTube. Um, we thank you for joining us. We thank you for being a part of PWP Prayer Movement. If you have not joined with the movement, um, go to PWP, um, I'm sorry, praywomanpray.org. That's where you will go to join and you will get all the notifications. Um, it, on the Facebook page, it is PWP Prayer Movement. Go there and you can um, get the information that you need so that you can join. We thank you again for those that have been sharing, that have been commenting, um, that have been letting us know that this is um, a tremendous help to you during your week. We are on Tuesday through Thursday at 6 a.m. right here on the Facebook and YouTube page. PWP Prayer Movement is where you'll find us. Thank you, thank you, thank you again for uh, catching hold of the vision of doing the live streaming in the mornings. Um, and we are here with you live. Leave your prayer request in the comments if you would like. If not, go to praywomanpray.org, click the link, um, and you can leave your prayer request there. There are women praying um, <clears throat> day and night for your needs. So thank you to our visionary for um, allowing me to share the platform with her as well as Apostle Pamela Wright. Um, I want you to know that it is a tremendous privilege for me to even be here. I do not take this lightly to come before God's people so that they can get what is needed um, in the word tonight, today, not tonight, <laughs> Sorry. This morning, I'm going to share with you um, about complete trust. I have, um, you know me, I have plenty of scripture for you, but we're not going to read all of them. Um, Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 is our foundational scripture, which you should already know that um, by memorizing that. But it's always good to go back to the word and make sure that you're not missing any words there. Um, Jeremiah 17, 7 through 8, Psalms 37 and 3. Um, Psalms 56 and 4, 1 John 4 and 16, James 1 and 6, Psalms 28 and 7, and Psalms 16 and 1. You can write those down. I hope you got your resources on this morning, your Bible, your, your paper, and your pen so you can jot the Word of God down so that you get your notes and get what you need from it. So I'm going to start reading Psalms 3 five through uh, six, and we all know this. So if you want to recite it while I'm uh, <clears throat> while I'm uh, speaking it from the word of God, you can. Uh, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. And then say acknowledge your ways. It said acknowledge him in all in, <clears throat> in all your ways, acknowledge him. Not what you think, not your common sense, but him acknowledge him let him direct your paths lean not on your own common sense but his understanding so complete trust on this morning i hope that you will get what you need from the word um that will carry you on through the day and also the week um again uh, when we are speaking and we are giving the word and giving scripture it's for you to catch hold so that your life <clears throat> can be more fulfilled that your life can be um you know, full and that you can live a whole life uh, for Christ, not just part of it, but your whole life is dedicated to him. So trust, what is trust? You know, a lot of us have a hard time trusting because of things that have happened to us in our past. So what happens is, is that we carry those um, same uh, deficiencies over here um, in our walk and becoming a new creature. We will carry those instead of just leaving them where they are when we accept him in our life. And of course, he understands because we are human and he knows that there are some feelings and some emotions that we may hang on to and that he'll have to do the work in us. So what is trust? Trust to have confidence in firm belief in character, ability, strength, or truth 
in someone or something. So our trust should be in who? You know, when you're children, you trust your parents. Um, you trust the adults that are around you. And of course, sometimes adults let you down and adults don't do exactly what they're supposed to do. Um, so our trust um, is broken at that moment. Our trust begins to be shattered because there are people that do not fulfill their promises or have broken you, uh, broken your heart, and not, um, you know, so much uh, protected you, or did things they were supposed to do to protect you as a child. So your trust begins to break, and your trust begins to be, um, you know, shattered and, and fragmented. So our trust is to have confidence in, firm belief in character, ability, strength, or trust of uh, truth. I'm sorry or truth of someone in something. We are have to have all three of those, four of those things in their character, believe in their character, believe in their ability, believe in their strength, and that they are a truthful person. Um, trust is act um, an activity that causes you to believe in someone or something. And sometimes it does not turn out well, which I just spoke about being a child. You know, you maybe you promised something and it did not come through. And so, so many um, broken promises um, began to shatter your trust in people and in some uh, things. And, um, and even in God, you know, if you grow up in a household that people say they're saved and things like that, and they start doing things that you know that are not godly, then that will begin to shatter your trust in God. Trust means to take a risk with your feelings, knowing that it may not turn out well, that it may hurt you, it may harm you, it may fragment your trust, um, your trusting, uh, you trusting in others. Um, nothing in our life is guaranteed, and it definitely depends on who or what we put our trust in. In. So nothing in our life is guaranteed. Um, so we also need to take a balance um, in our life when people have not come through for us, when they said they're going to do and they're not going to do. We have to have a balance in knowing that everyone is not the same. Everyone has, everyone does not have the same motive. Everyone does not have the same uh feeling. Um, you have to be able to have a balance in that. Um, sometimes we can go to the very extreme with trust saying, I don't trust anybody. Um, and then we can go to the uh, other side where we trust everybody and we end up being hurt and we're not sure what to do with those emotions and those feelings. So our trust, again, should be very precious. So how you trust um, in your natural life is how you should trust God in your spiritual life. So there is one source we definitely can trust in, and that is God. So he is asking for our complete trust. We have to trust him. We cannot um, believe one side of he'll do promises and not believe that he has our back and he will fulfill those promises. We have to believe the whole word, not one, not two pieces of it, not half of it. We have to believe the whole word. So our source is is God. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. So trust in the Lord in your heart, not trust in the Lord in someone else's um, stance or some who someone else is, but we're going to trust in the Lord with all our heart. The heart is where our emotions are being held. Our feelings are being held. Where we go and how we feel and how we react, that is where it is, um, where it's contained is in our heart. So we have to trust the Lord with our heart. So trust him with our mind, body, and so whatever is in our heart, we have to trust him. Whatever our desires are, we have to trust him. When we put our trust in God, it moves us forward and away from the anxieties, the disturbances, um, the mistrust, um, the judgment. It moves us away from those feelings. Remember I said the heart 
holds your emotion. So if your heart is still holding, well, I don't trust, um, I don't trust the church. I don't trust God. Um, I don't trust the people at the church. I don't trust my mother. I don't trust my auntie, my father, um, my relatives. I don't trust them. I don't trust my employer. If you're holding those things in your heart, those things need to be cleared away. And those things need to be, you need to be delivered from those mistrust. So we need to be moving away from those feelings, from anxieties and doubts and mistrust um, of others. And we need to turn those things all over to the Lord. Thank you, Lord. So it says, in all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. So we should not be moving. We should not be doing anything without asking God first. Is this the path that you want me to take? Is this where I need to go? Is this who I need to be with? Is this what I need to buy right now? Is my um, Are my finances where they need to be, God? There is um, a a way of asking God and being uh, transparent with him and not doubting what he wants to tell you, but we have to trust his direction. We have to instruct, we have to trust his instructions. If you're not trusting his instructions, then that means you're leaning to your understanding and you're ending up in the same situation that you were in before. Let's go to Jeremiah 17, uh, seven through eight. When we put our confidence in God, the seasons, the tests, the trials, everything that you are experiencing, we should be able to put those things in his hand, hands. We should not be worried about how he's going to fix it, when he's going to fix it. We should be putting it in his hands and allowing him to do the work. We're not going to lean to our understanding, our own understanding, and we're not going to go down the path that we think we should go down. Jeremiah 17, 7 through 8. It says, blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is the Lord for he shall be like a tree planted by the waters which spread out its roots by the river that means you get real comfortable you get um you get comfortable and you know you sit in your uh chair uh your favorite chair and you get real comfortable it says which spreads out its roots by the river because it feels like i can trust where i'm being seated i can trust where i'm being planted and will not fear when heat comes but its leaf will be green and will not be anxious in the year of the drought hallelujah no will cease from yielding fruit. When we put our confidence in God, no matter what season, no t- uh, the test, the trial, uh, the disturbances that life brings or the enemy would like to bring in our lives, we know that he will take care of us. It says when you spread, when the which spreads out its roots by the river, it means it got real comfortable. It means you need to get real comfortable in your walk with Christ, trusting him um, that he is going to take care of you. It says even in the heat, when it gets uh, troublesome, when it gets hard, when it's the tests and the trials, when you're feeling frustrated, you feeling like you want to give up, it turns the leaf green. It means that he will take care of you. He will not leave you alone. Hallelujah. He will not leave you in that drought. He will not leave you in that test and trial. He will not leave you feeling like, hey, I can't get through this. He is there. He's going to turn your life green. Hallelujah. He's going to turn your life um, so that you will be able to know he did it. So you don't have to worry about, again, those things that come to scorch you or burn you or take you out. They are going to be taken care of. He's going to take care of us in the drought. You will not be destroyed. I think that it deserves a, a, a hand clap of praise, a, a thank you, Jesus, or a hallelujah, or praise God right now. You will not be destroyed by what is coming or what has come, uh, <clears throat> what is coming or what you are dealing with right now. You will not be destroyed. You will spread out like the tree by the river and be taken care of. Hallelujah. So trusting God, we trust in God, but trusting 
is a two-way street. Um, we need to make sure that God can trust us with what he has given us so far and what we are living. So let's go to Psalms 37 and 3. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. And again, I'm not going to read all the scripture. I hope that you wrote them down so that you'll be able to uh, follow through. Uh, Psalms 37 and 3. Uh, <clears throat> trusting God is a two-way street, as I said. He wants to be able to, he wants us to trust him, and then he wants to trust us. He wants to be able to put our trust, um, his trust in us, knowing that we can live this life according to how he wants us to live, the guidelines and the standards of the word, uh, through prayer and through fasting. He wants to make sure that he can trust you with what he's going to give you, the promises that he's going to release in your life, the blessings that he's going to release in your life. He wants to trust you also. So being in being that he wants to trust you, we need to be doing everything that is um, possible to live a righteous and holy life, an upstanding life, a sanctified life, a separated life. Hallelujah. We need to make sure that that's what we are living uh, according, that we are living according to the word of God and also being honest. Um, honesty is definitely something that we have to live by. We have to be honest no matter what. In the Old Testament, uh, they talked about in Deuteronomy when they were um, when in when um, the Lord was giving Moses the laws and they were writing in the scrolls. They one thing they talked about is uh, the weights and the scales. You cannot be cheating your brother. You have to be honest with the weights and scales. You can't uh, price one, give one one price, and then the other one you give another price. That was cheating. That was a uh, bad business. So we have to be honest in our walk um, with uh, with God and as well with others and then base and really be honest with ourselves. So if you're living the way that God wants you to be um, living and the word tells us to be and being honest, um, we just not talk about it. We just not, you know, say hallelujah, amen to it. But we are definitely living what we're supposed to live. So Psalms 37 and three. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Trust in the Lord and do good. And the reward is that we dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. So as long as we're doing trusting and doing good and living a honest life, we will dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. His faithfulness will not leave us as we are uh, being faithful to him, as we are trusting him. We will be able to dwell in the promises and gain the blessings and promises that he has said in the word as we are dwelling in trust, dwelling in honesty, and also in uh, truth. So trusting in the Lord, trust in the Lord and do good, dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. That's how you're going to live. Just as the tree spreads its root to the river, um, there is nothing that can destroy you, nothing that can take you away out of the sight of God as long as you are living what you're supposed to be living and doing good and trusting in him. So we, um, we, I would say, as people of God, at times our trust wanes because, again, of what has happened in our natural life. And because it's happened in our natural life, we sometimes have the, um, the automatic, uh, what I want to say, the automatic, it automatically transfers. That's what I want to say. It automatically transfers over to our spiritual walk. And we um, should be living as a new creature. We should be living as trusting in the Lord. We should be living that way. We should not be living because of our past hurts and pains and brokenness and our shattered trust. We should be living as if it's already done. It's been done. He's going to get me through these trials. I'm not going to live according to what I used to live by. Um, I'm going to live by his 
his word. I'm going to live by his guidelines. I'm going to live so that when he uh, blesses me, he can trust me with these blessings. He can trust me with the promises and he doesn't have to worry about me, um, you know, being, uh, being disturbed or uh, being our, our trust being destroyed or shattered because of what we were before. So we are required um, to walk in his guidelines. We are required to follow the standards of the word. In order to see God work, we have to live according to his word. We have to live righteously. We have to live sanctified. There is no way that you will see the promises or feed on his faithfulness, as the scripture says, if we're not trusting and doing good and living righteously. You know, some people say, well, I do good deeds all the time and I'm morally correct. Well, it's more than morally correct because your morals that you were either raised with or not raised with will not um will not keep you in the guidelines, will not keep you um, in the standards of holiness. It will allow you to do what you want to do. And we're supposed to be trusting in the Lord, acknowledging him in all his, in all his ways and following his instructions. So your moral compass won't necessarily help you um, get in, um, in step and in line with the word of God. Now, is there some foundation to your moral standards? Yes, there is foundations. You know, we have the 10 commandments. We have things that we morally don't do because it's not right. But is that part, uh, that part is uh, are part of our foundation. Yes, it can be, but is it going to extend outside of that uh, when it comes to being in tests and trials? Is it, are you just going to jump out of the pan, as they say, and do what you need to do because um, it's morally correct? So our morals won't extend past what we're supposed to be doing according to the word of God. So we have to make sure that we are living a godly life. We're living an honest life. We're living a truthful life. We are doing good. We are following the commandments. We are following the guidelines. I don't know, um, you know, when you are in school, there's guidelines and there's rules. If the bell rings and you're late, then that may be a detention or that may be some kind of repercussion. So our repercussion uh, for not trusting in God and not living well and not being honest, it's basically um, not, we're not going to see the promises of God. We're not going to see his blessings. We are going to uh, be uh, walking around as, uh, uh, as the word says, like filthy rags and not having a home and we're walking around like a vagabond if we're not trusting in God and not trusting in his instructions. And we're not even uh, supposed to move and do things without him giving us guidance. I know I used to hear when I was younger, the older saints would say, you know, I ask him even what I should cook on today. And what I had in my mind, he said, no, let's do something else. And that was their way of saying, I trust God in everything. Hallelujah. We should be trusting him in every area of our life, not part of it again, not pieces of it. We should be trusting him in every area of our life. And I can speak to that um, as a uh, person that wanted to use their common sense all the time and be in control all the time. Um, that was not getting me, but so far. And then I came to a, a wall. I was stumped. There was no movement movement in my life because it was my common sense. It was my understanding. It was my wisdom. It wasn't God's wisdom. I was not going to him asking him, should I move this? Should I do this? How should I do that? Uh, what should my schedule be today? Which, which store should I go to today? Yes, it sounds, uh, you know, it sounds kind of like, you know, that's real deep of you, Pastor Tammy, to be talking about that, but I'm not trying to be a deep. I'm trying to get you to understand that there, um, 
um, is a um, there. You have to you have to trust him in everything and everything. And you giving your whole trust, your complete trust over to him is saying, God, I want your will to be done in my life. And we talk about the will of God in our life when we, you know, make it sound good and we give scripture. But are we living according to the will of God? Are we living according to his his um his guidelines and his standards are we completely trusting what he is saying in his word are we completely trusting in him to lead us and guide us and give us instructions um are we completely trusting him when we're in prayer that he will give us the answer at that moment and then if he doesn't give us the answer thank you god Hallelujah. We won't go off the path and do what we want to do anyway. We won't try to solve it. What are we doing with our trust in God? How are you trusting him? Are you trusting him wholeheartedly? Are you trusting him halfway? Are you trusting him not at all because of situations and things that have happened in your life or even the season? Thank you, God. Hallelujah. The season that you're in right now, it may look grim. It may look like I don't know how to get out of this, but are you trusting him with this season in your life? Are you throwing your hands up and saying, God, you can have it here. I'm going to push it over to you. I'm going to give it to you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to give it to you and not lean to my own understanding. I'm not going to pull it back. I'm not going to hold on to it. I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to lay it at your feet and trust you that you are going to take care of it. And then I'm going to get up from prayer knowing that you're going to do it for me and I'm going to move on. I'm going to move past all of those feelings that I have because I laid it at your feet. I'm casting all my cares on you. I am not um, going to lean to what I've heard, lean to my own understanding. I'm not going to lean to others' uh, advice. I'm not going to lead to any other uh, books that I've read. I'm going to lean completely on you. Hallelujah. If you're going to lean completely on him, then you're going to have to put all those uh, past hurts, those feelings, though, those things that you've uh, you know, your trust has been shattered. You're going to have to put that away. You're going to ask God to deliver your heart um, from those feelings, those emotions. You're going to let him have it. We are to cast our cares on him. Us worrying about them, us trying to put our hands in it is saying, God, you're not capable of doing it. Hallelujah. You're telling God that he's not capable of of taking care of you. It says, as the tree is planted by the river, even in the scorching hot sun, I know that you are taking care of me in this season. So when you step back, place it at his feet in prayer, in your conversation with him, that means I'm completely trusting you. I'm going to walk away from it. I'm not going to pick it up. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm not going to stay up at night. I'm not going to uh, not eat. I'm going to uh, not, you know, take a pill to make me go to sleep. I am completely trusting in you. Hallelujah. If you are completely trusting in God at this moment, I want you to give him a hallelujah. Give him a thank you, Jesus. Give him, I trust you on this morning, Lord. I'm not going to put my trust in man, in things, in my own thoughts. I'm going to completely trust you. I'm leaving it in prayer. So where do we, where do you put your trust? Hallelujah. I've given some more, I've given points on this already, but we're going to talk about it anyway. Where do you put your trust? Do you put your trust in what mom has said and mom has done or what your dad and uncle and pastor and 
those that you follow and are led by? Do you put your trust in them? Because I can tell you, if you put your trust in them, there is a point in time that they may fail you. There is a point in time that they may not have the answer for you and not may not have and will not have the answer for you. Um, they may be even stumped in their life. They may be even dealing with mistrust in their life. So you have to make sure again, that you're laying those issues, those seasons, those problems, those disturbances, anxieties, at the feet of God so that you are free to worship him in freedom, that you are free to worship him knowing that he is going to take care of them. So Psalms 56 and 4, where do you put your trust? Where is your trust at on this morning? Is it in uh, what you uh, what you hear someone else say? Is it in a book that you read? Is it in uh, your pastor? Is it in your mama, your daddy, your uncle, your relatives? Is your trust in your job? Is your trust in your uh, your supervisor? Is your trust in your uh, employer? Period. As a corporation, where is your trust? If you trust your job more than you trust God. God, then there is going to be a problem. If you trust what your uh, supervisor or your manager is saying, there is going to be a problem. If you trust what that book is saying um, and you cannot look past and grab hold of the word, there will be a problem. Where do you put your trust in this morning? Uh, Psalms 56 and 4, it says, in God, I would... Um, Yes, in God, I will praise his word. In God, I have put my trust. I will not fear. What can flesh do to me? What can man do to me? What can someone else do to me if I am fully putting my trust in God? I have to put my trust. I will not fear, but I will put my trust in him. I won't trust man. I won't trust what man has created. I won't trust even my dog, my cat, or my bird. I will trust what God is saying to me. I will trust and put my worries, my anxieties, um, those disturbances, those things that have shattered my trust. I will put them at his feet and I will let him take care of it. In God, I will praise his word. And we talk about all of our, uh, you know, trials and tribulations and tests and uh, the things that we think we can't endure. And we're not praising God enough. So I'll praise God before he fixes everything that I've laid at his feet, because I know that he will take care of me. He is not going to let me be destroyed. Hallelujah. He is not going to let life just run all over me and let the enemy use all of his tools and throw everything at me. He is going to protect me. He is going to give me what I need to go through what I'm going through. He is not going to destroy me. It says, even when the sun is scorching, hallelujah, my leaf is going to be green. I'm going to be green. I'm going to look like life. I'm going to feel like life has been given back. I am going to live according to the word of God so that people can see, even though I got all of this going on over here on the side and back of me, in front of me, um, in, in at my feet and whatever is going on in my life, I am going to show up in every, I'm going to show up in every environment as if God has already taken care of it, that I have the victory, that I win in these situations because I have completely trusted in God. I have left it at his feet. I'm not picking it up. I'm not going back. I'm not going to say it out loud again. I'm not going to say I'm struggling. I'm not going to say I don't understand anymore because I've left it at his feet. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. I've left it at his feet. Tammy has left it at his feet. Whatever your name is, that's where you should put it in there. Whatever, uh, if it's John, if it's Paul, um, if it's Rita, if it's whatever your name is, put it in there because Tammy has left it at his 
feet. Where do you put your trust on this morning? Is your trust in man? Is your trust in someone else? Is your trust in, like I said, the job, the manager, the corporation? Where is your trust? So how do we build trust, you say, Pastor Tammy? How do I build it? If it's been shattered, if all of my uh, promises, all the promises by people have not come through. Where do I put my trust in this morning? How do I build it? And where do I put it? I gave you where you should put it. And it says, put it in. I will not fear. And I, what can flesh um, do to me? So you are not going to fear. You're not going to have doubt. You're not going to mistrust. You're not going to put it in man, but you're going to put it in God. So how do I trust God? How do I build my trust back? Um, of course, in prayer is the number one thing is to building your trust in prayer, saying, God, you know, I'm not trusting this process right now. I'm not trusting what's going on right now. So I need you in this moment. I need you right now. I need you to guide me. I need to trust in you, trust in my heart that you're going to give me what I need. You're going to instruct me. And it is, yes, it is hard to trust uh, the process. Yes, I can raise my hand a hundred thousand times, my feet included. It is sometimes hard to trust the process that you are in, but let you know from experience that God is not going to allow you to be destroyed. He is not going to allow you to be discouraged. Um, he's not going to allow you to say, I'm giving up. He is going to do what is necessary to keep us um, enduring. He's going to keep us completely at his uh, thoughts and and in, in his care so that we are not destroyed. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. So how do we build our trust? Knowing that God loves us. That's it. And that's all. I know we just um, celebrated um we, we celebrate Easter and resurrection and Good Friday and those kind of things. We celebrate his dying on the cross. We celebrate him rising. We celebrate his love. This His love for us by dying on the cross. We need to recognize how much of a sacrifice and how much of a big deal that was because there's no man that has ever sacrificed for his, for others. For, uh, for a whole world. There's no other man that has sacrificed for the whole world. It says, for God so loved the world, not just you in your corner, your state, your city, your zip code, but for the world. So we have to know that God loved us because he gave his only begotten son for the world. And the next is by allowing God's love to be shared. So we are not to just keep his love and, and keep his love hidden in us and not sharing his love with others by sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ, by sharing the word of God, by sharing your testimony, showing that God loved you so much that he did not leave you in your situations. He did not leave you half. He um, He brought you and he um, delivered you wholly um, that those things that were in your heart, those things that were in your mind, um, he renewed those things. We need to be sharing God's love. That is how we build our trust. Um, and then the next thing is believing there is no way I can overcome without him. And like I said, our moral compass will only get us so far. Our own common sense will only get us so far because it will lead us back to where we were. But we have to know that he is not going to leave us. He is going to give us the ability to overcome what we are in. You got to know that. You got to believe in that. There's no way that he will leave us where we are. There's no way he's going to let our trials, our tribulations, our own getting in the way disturb or destroy our lives. He loves us for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have 
everlasting life. So we have to take that scripture right there. I know it's simple. It's probably it's Sunday school uh, foundation, Sunday school one on one uh, Bible study one on one. But we have to sometimes go back to that scripture and know that he just did not uh, die for, you know, uh, just for us to stay the same. He died for us to be changed. He died because he loved us so much. He sacrificed his whole life for us. We have to recognize that and knowing that God loves us. So the next thing, um, and that's first John four and 16. You can go to that, um, that scripture. If you'd like, I'm not going to read it. And like I said, I'm not going to read all the scriptures on today, but I want you to grasp hold of complete trust whatever your trust has been, however your trust has been shattered naturally and spiritually, you need to be laying that at the feet of Christ so that you are completely delivered and healed from those things. You cannot live this life without having trust and belief and faith and hope. So no doubting, we cannot doubt um, James 1 and 6 and Psalms 28 and seven, that is the verse. So no doubting, no doubting that God can deliver. He can heal. Um, he's going to come good on his promises. Um, he's going to protect. He's going to heal, deliver, save um, all of those. Whatever you've laid at his feet um, and you're trusting him with, you have to know that doubt does not have a place in those situations, in those things that you have given to him. It's casting all of your cares on him. I'm trusting you, God, with every care, everything that will cause me to step back, everything that will cause me to pull back everything that will cause me to not believe you can do it i am leaving it at your feet on this morning i am not going to pull back i'm not going to go get it i'm not going to pick it back up i'm not going to complain about when you when you how long it's taking you to do it when you're going to do it how you're going to do it i will lean not to my own understanding. I will find comfort in your word. I will live a good and godly life. I will live by your principles and guidelines in the word. I will pray and leave the things, hallelujah, at your feet. I will fast knowing that you're going to take care of those things that I have put before you. I'm going to fast knowing that you're going to put my focus back on you and not have all of this stuff running in my, in my life and trusting in and other things. I'm going to completely trust in you. I'm going to fast so that my heart is clear, that my mind is clear, that I'm completely trusting in you. I'm going to completely trust in what you say and how you do it in the process that I'm in because I know that you're not out to get me. I know that you're not out to destroy me. I'm not going to doubt. Now, one more day, now, one more time, now, one more hour. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Now, one more second, not one more minute will I doubt you, Father. I will believe in what you said in your word. I will believe what you have said in prayer. I will believe what you've given me to write down. I will believe in your standard, your promises, and your blessings that you speak about in the word. I will not do it anymore. I will not doubt. I will take a stance. I will decree and declare on today, no more doubting. I put my trust in you. My complete trust, not half, not less, not uh, a fourth, not 25%, not 50%, my complete, my hundred complete trust in you. I will not do it without you. I will not move without you. I will not say without you. I will not react without you. I will not buy without you, Father. I will do exactly what I'm supposed to do. So no doubting on this morning, James 1 and 6 and Psalms 28 and 7 is the scripture reference for that. So failure to have trust in God is telling him he can't do it. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Failure, I'm going to say it again. Failure to have trust in God means that you are unsure that he cannot do it. The uh, Psalms 56 and uh, uh, 4 says, in God, I will praise his word. In God, I have put my trust. I will not fear. Hallelujah. 
Failure to trust means that you are unsure of who God is and what he is capable of doing in your life. I gave you scriptures that are telling you that he will take care of his own. He will take care of those that do good and live truthfully and honestly and not, um, you know, not doubting. I've given you those scriptures. So I don't want to be on the side of failure in trusting him. I want to be on the side knowing that he is going to take care of me. He's going to take care of my um, children. He's going to take care of my home. He's going to take, he's going to protect those that are connected to me, my environments that I go in. He is there with me. So again, failure to have trust in God is telling, is telling him you're unsure who unsure of who he is and what he's capable of. I don't want to be on the side of that. So we don't want to go back to what we used to do and how we trusted before on this morning. We got a new outlook on how to trust. Where do I put my trust? How do I build my trust? And absolutely no doubting on this morning. So I hope that the word has given you what you need on this morning. So I'm going to give you um, one more scripture, Psalm 16 and one, and I'm actually going to go there and read Psalm 16 and one. Trusting is the key um, to this walk. Trusting Faith and hope, they're all um, combined together. They come together. Um, that is something that we all need to have, the trust, the faith, and the hope that he's working in our life. So Psalm 16 and 1, I'm going to read that. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. I hope that, you're, hope that you are taking notes on this morning so that you can get what you need from the word of God, 16 and one, it says, preserve me, O God, for in you, I put my trust. Hallelujah. So our trust and our faith and our hope, they should all be working in our lives. We're going to, again, he's going to, it says, preserve me. Hallelujah. You know, when they put preservatives in, in food and in things, it means that it keeps it a long time. That it'll keep it um, to the new dates. Um, they say some things, you know, like canned goods sometimes have four or five, um, hallelujah, four, uh, four or five years of expiration on them. Canned goods um, can sit in the cabinet forever and have expiration. You bought it on um you bought it on December 4th and it lasts till December 4th of 2025 or 2026. That means it's been preserved enough so that you can eat it um, at a later time. And we're asking, David was asking him, preserve me, oh God. Keep me, oh God. Protect me, oh God. Don't let me expire. Don't let me be destroyed, God by what is being put in front of me, by what is being said and what I've heard and what I've seen. Preserve me, God. Preserve what I feel. Preserve my feelings towards you, God. Preserve my trust towards you, God. Preserve my faith, God. Preserve my hope, God. Even though I don't see it, even though I can't see it, even though I can't feel it, I don't see you working, preserve me. Don't let me uh, faint. Don't let me fall to the wayside. Don't let me uh, go to my and lean to my own understanding of, and use my own wisdom. Preserve me, oh God. For you, in you, I put my trust. I put my trust in God on this morning. The word of God is where I put my trust. In you, in prayer, is where I put my trust. I will not let me fail you. I will not let me get in the way. I will not let my own common sense get in the way anymore, God. I will put my complete trust trust in you. You're preserving me. You're protecting me. You're hiding me. You're not letting things happen to me. So I'm going to put my trust in you. I'm not going to, I'm not going to let anyone else tell me anything different that I cannot trust you. I trust you, God, with my life. I trust you with um, my children. I trust you with everything in me, my whole being, what I what I am. And I trust you that you will change how I feel. I trust you how you're, uh, you will change my thinking and my pattern and what's in my heart. And I, I trust that you change my future. I trust you that you will give me what I need to walk in this life. It says, preserve me, oh God, for you. I put my trust, not anyone else's. I don't trust in anything else. I don't trust in what man says or man can do. 
I trust in you. So he is going to keep you from being destroyed. He will keep you from uh, feeling like there is no hope. He is going to keep you uh, feeling like I can do it as long as you leave everything in prayer. Leave everything at his feet. Do not, do not take this uh, this and uh, don't take everything to God in prayer and then take it back or try to fix it or try to go back and grab it and say, well, since you're not doing it, I'm going to take it into my own hands. You know, it's going to end up in a mess. Hallelujah. You know, it's going to end up um, not being correct. You know, it's going to. So we don't want God to think that he cannot do it anymore. We don't want to have mistrust with him. We want to trust him completely with our life. So God, I thank you for today. I thank you for your love. I thank you for sending your son just for me, just for us that are on this stream, Father. We ask that you forgive us for not trusting you and not completely putting our lives in your hand and what's going on in our life. Hallelujah. We're not going to hide anymore. We're not going to keep it to ourselves, Father. We're going to lay it at your feet. We're going to lay all of our cares. We're going to put all of our cares. We're going to put all of our mistrust and all of our things that in uh, that are causing trials and that are causing us to be tested. We're going to put those things at your feet. We're not going to uh, pick them back up. We're going to completely trust you. We're going to trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to our own understanding on this morning. We're not going to lean um, to our own common sense. We're not going to lean to our own book sense. We're not going to lean to our college, what we've learned in college and higher learning. We are going to put our trust in you. We're going to put our trust in prayer. We're going to put our trust in your word. We're going to follow your word on this morning. We're going to ask you for everything that we uh, move in, everything that we put our hands to, every thought that we have, Father. We're going to check with you and make sure that it is in your will, hallelujah, that it's not in our will, that it's not what we want to do. It's in what you want us to do, Father. We're going to follow your instructions. We're not going to be disobedient. There is no half disobedient. There is no sometimes disobedient. We want, we don't want to be disobedient at all. We want to completely trust you in this process, in this walk, Father. We won't lean to our understanding. We won't lean to what we think we know. We won't lean on our past experiences, on someone else's experience, Father. We'll lean on you. We'll, we'll uh, stand and wait. We will give it to you. We will give you um, all of our cares, what we are battling with, what we are feeling like a disturbance what we feel like we can't endure, we will give it to you, Father. And we'll walk away knowing that you are taking care of us. Just like the tree by the water, you provide in the disturbance, you provide in the storms, you provide in life, uh, you uh, provide during those times of anxiety. And when we feel like we cannot make it, you provide strength, you provide life for us, you provide um, strength and uh, endurance for us. You provide for us and we will trust your provision on this morning. We will not leave in front of you uh, and take back what we prayed for in front of you, Father. We will lean on you. We will lean on your understanding. We will lean on you and trust that you will protect us and us not be destroyed. We will lean our anxieties, our cares, our fears, our mistrust, our judgment, our character flaws. We will lean them. We will leave them with you on the altar because we completely trust you on this morning, Father. We completely trust that you will do what is necessary for us to continue to live righteously, for us to do good, for us to be honest, God. Let us be honest in our dealings on a daily basis. Let us be truthful. Let us always let the truth ring in our hearts and in our minds and out of our mouths, Father. We don't want to be uh, untrusting. We don't want to be untruthful. We don't want to be not honest 
We want to be the what be good as your word says. We want to do good. We want to be trustful. We want to be uh, the honest person that people can come to and get the honest word of God and not our own opinion. We will trust you on this morning, Father. We won't give up. Uh, we will stay and watch you work. We will tell others. We will show your love on this morning. That's how we trust you, Father, because you love this for God. So love the world that you gave your only son for us, for me, for Tammy, for those that are on this stream on this morning. You gave your love for the PWP movement. You saw down the line that it was coming. You saw the future of PWP prayer movement and you, we will trust you with the movement. We will trust you in the movement. We will trust you taking us where we need to be in our lives. We will no longer trust in ourselves in others. We will trust in you. We will trust in you, Father. We will trust in you, Father. We will trust in you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. We will trust in you. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. We'll gain peace in trusting in you. Hallelujah. We'll gain peace by trusting in your word. We'll gain peace by trusting in what you said to us in prayer. We'll gain peace. Hallelujah. No more being disturbed and sidetracked. Hallelujah. Just because I don't see you working, just because we don't see you working or moving. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. We still trust you. We trust you with our whole life. Hallelujah. We trust you. Even when we don't feel good. Hallelujah. Even though we're dealing with illnesses, Father, we trust that you'll heal us. You, we, we trust that you'll give us the wisdom on what to do and how to do even in those times of illness. Hallelujah. When you want to give us instructions, God, we'll listen and we'll hear. We'll lean to those instructions. We'll move past what we felt and how we felt and those people that have done us wrong and those people that have broken promises. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. We'll move past those shattered trust, that shattered trust and that shattered feeling of can I move? Can I trust them? Can I not? We will trust totally in you, Father. Hallelujah. In every area of our life, in every environment that we are in, we will trust that you will take care of it. Hallelujah. Now, Father, I pray for those that are battling with illnesses, the mind Ill, the, the, the mind, God, illnesses of the mind, hallelujah, will trust you with the illnesses of the mind, God, that you would heal them, hallelujah. You will heal the minds, you will heal those that feel like they can't get over and get past things, hallelujah. Heal God, deliver God. In the name of Jesus, your blood came raining, running down the cross for these things. We believe that you will heal us, Father. We believe that you hear us when we call. Heal those things that we don't even know about before we even get to the doctor, before we even get an x-ray or MRI, God. Heal those things, Father. Hallelujah. Let's get a clean, uh, let us have a clean uh, bill of health when we go to the doctor's, Father bones and uh, blood and um, veins, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Heal God. We trust you with our life. We trust that you won't let us be destroyed. We trust you that you will heal us on this morning. Those things that we have not even spoken to you, Father, give us the boldness to speak out and say them so that we're healed from them. We'll trust you with those things, Father. We'll trust that you don't use them against us. Hallelujah. We thank you that you don't use it against us. Hallelujah. We'll trust in you this morning. We'll trust in who you are. We will not fail to trust you. Complete trust on this morning. Hallelujah. The word today is complete trust. We'll completely trust you. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. We'll completely trust you. And we thank you again for the sacrifice that you gave your son for us. 
We won't take it for granted. We'll give you thanks for it. We'll remember when we go to complain and not trust that you did that just for us. You did that for Tammy. You did that for everyone that's on this stream. We will remember. We put our complete trust in you on today. God, we'll stop worrying. We give all our cares to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I hope that the word has helped you on this morning. I hope that prayer has helped you on this morning. The word of God is what we use to do battle. The word of God and prayer and fasting is the way to get us to the point where we completely trust God. Leave it at his feet in prayer. Don't go back and get it and grab it and act like he can't take care of it. We don't want to fail God and, and doubt him. We want to not lean to our own understanding. We want to lean to his and ask him for every direction and every path that we will go. And I hope that the word will give you that um, as you are watching us Tuesday through Thursday at 6 a.m. We're hoping that the word is helping you mature and grow. And um, it's giving you what you need to make it through hard times and times you feel like you can't endure. Hallelujah. PWP prayer movement is just that. It's a, a team of praying women and men that want to see you win, that want to see you overcome, that want to see you come through, that want to see you um, to be, uh, want to see you be the best you can be in, um, in this walk. So join us Tuesday through Thursday at 6 a.m. right here on Facebook and YouTube. Right now it is time to give, um, give at dollar sign cash app, dollar sign PWP movement, put your, um, you can put in the memos that, uh, you know, you need prayer or anything. You can leave it there too. go to prayer woman, pray woman, pray.org and leave your prayer request. Again, we thank you for joining us and we will see you next time. Believe and believe and put all of your trust in God. Hallelujah.